Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I want to welcome you to uh, Grace and tell you that I'm glad that we are here. We're going to stop and go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, I do want to introduce you to uh, Mr. Terry Boyette. Terry, wait, say hey. Uh, Terry is a Gideon, and he's going to be filling our pulpit today. Um, he will uh, be standing at the door at the end of the service, so if you would like to give a donation to the Gideons uh, and the work that they do, which I know that he will talk about, just know that that's going to be an opportunity, and that's why he's going to be standing there with an offering plate. All right? Uh, so that's not for him. That's a Gideon gift, and if you want to give to it, just a heads up, uh, you'll have a chance at the end of at the end of the day uh, our teacher for the week is Amanda Hicks so remember her we want to pray for her specifically this week uh, she is the only third grade teacher that actually has the same students all day long every other class alternates so the students share classes and she is a like almost like a they call it an experiment, but for all of us, it's the way we did it, right? That's what elementary was like for us. Um, but anyway, so she has the same kids all year, all day long. Uh, so just kind of a unique situation, and you want to pray um, for her in that way. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for today and a chance to be here. We ask your blessings on Terry as he prepares to bring your word to us that you would speak through him, that you would allow our ears and our hearts to be open to what you have to say, that you would bless the work of the Gideons and the support that we provide for them. We ask your blessings on Amanda, uh, the work that she does and the way that she does it with such joy and energy. We're thankful for, and we ask that you would bless her this week, that she would be able to keep her energy and her sanity about her as a student see the end in sight. We ask that you would give us opportunities to support her and prepare us already for what next year will look like and how we can show the gospel to her and to her students. We recognize that there is unrest in the world around us, and we ask that you as the God of peace would be present. We think about the protests and the riots that are happening in our country. God, would you be there? Would your spirit be present? Would you bring peace and order? Because that is the civilization that you have created and called us to be a part of. And we entrust that to your hands. We also think about us for this week and we mourn the state of health care in our state. And we ask that you would intervene and find a way to help us protect one another and provide care for our fellow state people. God, that you would be present in that and allow the church to provide leadership in it. And Father, we ask that you would bless Grace Fellowship, that the work that we do and the way that we love one another would bring honor to you and would bring growth to your kingdom, that you would continue to put people and families in front of us to, to love, to share the gospel to, and through that your name would be proclaimed and your gospel would grow. And we ask that in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, as Pastor David said, I'm Terry Boyette with the Clark County Gideons. And on behalf of the Gideons International, we thank you for allowing the Gideons to come in your church today and speak to you. Appreciate you giving up your time behind the pulpit. I know how pastors hate to give up their time behind the pulpit. So... Uh, <laughs> I am here mainly for two reasons today. First and foremost, I'm here to praise and worship my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I hope everybody here today can say that, that He is your Lord and Savior. Uh, I ask all the time, what do Gideons do? Who are the Gideons and what do they do? Well, a lot of people you would think, used to, everybody pretty well knew, but a lot of people now don't really know what a Gideon does. Well, what we do is we give out Bibles to boys and girls, men and women that are lost throughout the world. The Gideons go into about 190 different countries. They have Bibles that are printed in about 90 different languages. And uh, on an average week, we give out about 1.4 million Bibles. That's a week. We give out about that many in one week. Uh, the Gideons consist, and this was prior to COVID. I don't have new figures now. Most of the figures I give you were prior to COVID. It kind of slowed things down a little bit. But the Gideons consist of about 300,000 professional and businessmen and their wives. Most Gideons uh, that are married, their wives will join the auxiliary. 
And what the auxiliary does is they go around with their husbands. If we're not doing a Bible distribution or something like that, they go around with their husbands and support them, pray for us. They actually uh, get together and give out Bibles themselves. So they do just exactly what we do. They just give them out to different, different places. Uh, as you probably know, and if you've heard Gideon's before, we give out Bibles in hotels and motels and schools and hospitals. We give them to the military, the police and fire and rescue. Uh, every Bible that we give out, we give out this large Bible that y'all are probably familiar with. Uh, we put these mainly in hotels and clinics and stuff like that. The Gideons print their own Bibles. It cost us about $5 to print this Bible right here. They tell me, and I don't know how they come up with this figure, but they said this Bible right here placed in a hotel will last about five years. In that five-year period, they estimate that it comes into contact with about 2,300 people. Again, I don't know how they come up with that figure, but that's what they tell us. Uh, the smaller Bibles we give out, y'all are probably real familiar with this. This little red Bible right here cost us about a dollar and a half to print. We give these out to the fifth graders at schools. So every Gideon camp in every county, but at some point during the year, will go to the schools in their county and hand these out to fifth graders. But I'm going to tell you something that's real sad. For the past two years in Quitman School District, they will not let us come in and hand these Bibles out to the fifth graders. That's, that's in, in my county, in Clark County. They will not let us. It depends on the superintendent of the school whether we can come in or not. And, and depending on who that superintendent or principal is determines whether we can go give these Bibles out. So for the past two years, we hadn't been able to do that. Fortunately, last year, the sixth graders moved to a different school, had a different principal, they let us come in and give them to the sixth graders. So we were able to get them, and hopefully this year we'll be able to do the same thing. The ladies, the auxiliary, give out these blue Bibles. They will take them, and when we go to a hospital and give them out to the patients, or we go to a nursing home and give them out to the, to the patients there, the ladies will go and give these out to the staff. So they give them a little different Bible than what, what we normally give out. As a Gideon myself, I purchase these Bibles myself. Each Gideon has to purchase his own testaments to give out when we witness. We also witness while we're out uh, giving out Bibles and doing other things. So we, we give out personal worker testaments. Any of you ever received one of these? Uh, they come in different. They might be camouflage or brown or different, different colors. But you can be assured every dollar you donate to the Gideons, goes to the purchase of a Bible. When a Gideon goes out and speaks, if we go out of the country on a Bible bliss and give out Bibles, we pay our own cost. Any, any money that's taken up in a uh, uh, church collection or uh, any other type of collection we do, that money goes to purchase Bibles. It goes to uh, purchase Bibles in the United States. It goes to purchase Bibles out of the country. If it's a, if it's a country that can't afford the Gideons there, can't raise money there because the people can't afford to buy them, we as Gideons, we have two fundraisers a year where we take up money just from the Gideons. We call them faith fund. We go in there and have a supper and have a speaker and all that and we'll set a goal on how much money we try to raise in a year to send to these countries that don't can't afford Bibles. Our goal in Mississippi last year was $250,000. We exceeded it. Every year I've been in there, they have exceeded that $250,000 goal that Gideons give to buy Bibles. So we don't just ask y'all to help us buy Bibles. We do it ourselves, too. That's why most Gideons, or all Gideons, rather, have to be a professional person or a business person who has the ability and the finances to do this. If you have your own business or you work for yourself and stuff like that, you kind of have the flexibility to get off and go do these kind of things. Uh, 
as church members, y'all support when we come in and speak at a church. There's Gideons all over, all over the county, probably today in uh, Lauderdale County, that are speaking at a church somewhere. Each Gideon camp will have what they call a uh, Bible bliss, and they'll have a day where they try to meet as many churches in their county as they can. So they get Gideons from surrounding counties like Clark and Wayne, uh, Nusoba, to come in and try to meet out as many churches as they can. That's why I'm here today and not one of your local Gideons. They try not to speak in their local county if they can. They try to get enough from surrounding counties, and then we need them in Clark County, we will get somebody from Lauderdale County to come speak in our churches. You know, so uh, we kind of, in order to be a Gideon, like I said, you have to be a professional or business person. That means somebody with a college degree or somebody that has their own business or salesman or, or whatever uh, to be one. Uh, we, we get them from a local church. You have to be nominated by your pastor recommended by your pastor before you can be a Gideon. You cannot be a pastor and be a Gideon. If you're a pastor, they don't want you to, to quit doing what you're doing and be a Gideon. Okay? You have to be a layperson to be a Gideon. Uh, the Gideons were started. Two traveling businessmen met in an inn in 1899. Both of them were Christians. They got to talking and they come up with this idea to form the Gideons. Now, it took from uh, 1899 to 1908 to get everything organized. And in 1908, they started giving out their first Bibles. From 1908 to 2001, that's 93 years, they give out one billion Bibles. That's with a B. From 2001 to 2015, which is 14 years, they give out their second billion. Now we're well on our way now, from 2015 to now. Uh, obviously it's slowed down by COVID, but to working on our third billion Bibles. That's a lot of Bibles, isn't it? And, and where does that money come from to purchase these Bibles? It comes from people just like y'all. Local churches, where we're Gideons all over the uh, country speaking in local churches. Uh, are y'all familiar with the uh, Gideon card program? A lot of funds comes from this. So I encourage you to use the Gideon card. Instead of going to Walmart or someplace and buying one of those seven, eight dollar or more cards to give out, you use a Gideon card, okay, and uh, support the Gideons. It purchases a Bible. Uh, we also have a program called Friends of Gideons. That's people that want to support the Gideons that can't be a Gideon. They can they can become a friend of Gideon and support us. You can support us in more than just your finances. We need your prayers as much as we need your finances. I told you we're in 190 different countries, but there's still a lot of countries we can't get into. And just like that school equipment that we can't get into, we need people praying that God will open those doors back up. He'll open up doors in new countries and keep the doors open that we've got open now. You know, it's getting harder and harder for us to even put them in a hotel now. Have you seen the uh, what's happening to all of our hotels? They're being bought up by uh, foreign uh, people that necessarily don't want us coming in and putting Bibles in there. So it's getting harder and harder just to do that. We have thousands of testimonies of people that have went into a hotel with nothing else on their mind but committing suicide. And they'll get in there and they'll find, they'll find one of these right here. And they'll go to reading it. And God will touch their heart and they'll change their mind. You know, uh, if we can get it in somebody's hand, it makes a big difference. But it's got to be from dedicated Christians who are willing to support the ministry that we have of getting these Bibles in their hands. Uh, I was looking at a little information on the Bible. It said the first Bible was printed in 1455. It was printed in three different languages. The Bible was written over a period of 1,500 years by 40 different authors. And if you've read the Bible, you know 
the different books that were written by different authors, they all blend together, don't they? Many of these 40 people never met each other, but they were able to put this book together and one part of it goes along with what the other part says. So it is God inspired. There is no doubt about that. No, no doubt that it is inspired by God. Now I'm going to ask you a question today. Do you believe in your heart that this is the inerrant, inspired, infallible Word of God? Do you believe everything in it? I, I, I can stand up here and say, if you don't believe everything in it truthfully, then you can't believe any of it. You got to believe it all, that this, this is God's inspired Word. Uh, he inspired the men that penned this. You know, I have a lot of people say, well, it's just a book written by men. Yeah, they were written by men over a 1,500 year period that many of them never met each other. And they come up with the same stuff to put in it. So it, it was definitely inspired, inspired by God. I'm going to read you some, some, some scriptures. And one of them y'all already heard today. Uh, first one is John 1.1. 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There's power in this book. Do you believe that just putting this book in somebody's hand has power? That God can work through just getting this in their hand? I'm going I'm to give you some examples here in a few minutes just to, to prove that. Uh, but we got to get it in their hand. Isaiah 55, 11, which you've already heard. So shall my word go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the things where I send it. So if God sends this book, one of these, any of these books, out and puts it in somebody's hand, I think that is a divine meeting right there. He intended on that book being put in their hands. He knew from the foundation of time where we were going to be, he knew I was going to be here today and you were going to be here today. It's not by accident you're here. Do you believe when you're born, God has an appointed time for us to, to die? Do, do y'all believe that? If, if you believe it? I do. I believe he has an appointed time for us to die. We were talking in Sunday school about how hard it is when you lose somebody. Brother Glenn said, uh, was talking about that. I lost my wife, which was very active in church with the Gideons. Uh, she was the uh, Bible school director, the WMU director. Anything happened at the church, she was the church clerk. Uh, she was a uh, Area 5 director for the Gideon's Auxiliary. She was very active in the church. My pastor, where I go to church right now, is wife. Very active in the church. Both of them died within close together from COVID. And I had a hard time, but I, but I, I know in my heart that God has an appointed time for us to go. His ways are greater than ours. He knows things that we don't know. So, he, he, you know, we can't even imagine his thoughts. We can't come up and, and imagine, why does he take somebody that is doing so much for him and take them home? Why does he pull them out of the church, somebody that is doing so much for him? Well, I think he saved her from something worse than COVID when he took her home. I really do. You know, but she had an appointed time to go, and it don't matter what you're doing, serving him or not serving him. When that time comes, you're not going to stop it. So you better be ready all the time, because it could happen on the way home from church today. You know, we, none of us know what's going to happen in the next in the next hour. The next verse I have. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. So this is our instruction book right here. If we read this Bible every day, and I hope we do, uh, we know what God's will is for us and what we should be doing, don't we? This is how we're going to find out. If we're not reading it, then we don't really know what God expects out of us. Uh, 
If we have new Christians come into the church, we need to disciple them. Young people, we need to disciple them. We need to have them a, a Bible study, something where they can, they can learn what they're supposed to do as a Christian. And, and how are we going to learn? By studying God's Word. Now, I told you, uh, well, one other thing before I go to there. Y'all have probably heard this before. It's a saying I've heard a lot of preachers say. That if I can ever get this Bible in somebody's hand, that's a good thing. If they ever get it in their head, it's even better. But if they ever get it in their heart, it'll make a new creature out of them. They say a lot of people are going to miss heaven by 12 inches. You know what that difference is? From here to here. You're not going to get to heaven by having this in your head unless you've got it in your heart also. So I encourage you to have that personal relationship with Christ. And I'm sure your pastor encourages that all the time. Uh, but some examples of some people that done that. Uh, a college student named Wong John Kim was given a, a Bible at college in a college distribution. He really didn't want to take it. Now, he was a devout Buddhist, and he really didn't want to take He didn't care about Christianity. But he, he kind of felt embarrassed not to take the book, he said, so he took it. But he took it home and just laid it aside, throwed it in his dorm, and just left it there. For some strange reason, a few months later, he picked that book up and started reading it. Why would you think he would do that? You think maybe that God inspired that? The Holy Spirit touched him when he had that Bible in his hand? I th there's power in this word. I'm telling you, there's power in it. Well, anyway, he started reading the Bible. He became more and more interested in it, so he joined a uh, student Bible study group. And through that study group and continuously studying the Bible, he got saved, and he's now a pastor preaching God's Word. So how many people does that one little Bible affect? Only God knows how much. Another one, a young Muslim businessman uh, was traveling on a business trip in Batar. He checked into a hotel. And when he checked into the hotel, now he, he was a... Uh, he was a Muslim. He didn't care about Christianity. Matter of fact, he hated Christianity. When he checked into the hotel, he opened a drawer. What did he find? What you gonna find in a hotel when you open up a drawer? One of these little blue testaments like this. He said it made him so mad, he took the book and threw it across the room, headed out on his daily trip to do his uh, work. Well, when he come back to the room, the housekeeping had cleaned up the room and put the book back on his nightstand. So, uh, he said when he left, he took that book with him, but he didn't take it with him to read. He took it with him so nobody else would be exposed to it. Four months later, he picked that book up and started reading it. This Muslim who hated Christianity picked this book up and started reading it. While he was reading that book, the Holy Spirit convicted him and he gave his life to Christ. Okay. Another one. This one's kind of, when I first seen this one, it was kind of a little strange to me. Doran LaForce of Blue Box, Texas, said a Gideon jail visit changed his life before he was ever born. Yes, how did that happen? Well, his father as a young boy uh, was in jail. And a Gideon visited the jail, and uh, his name was Leo. And... Uh, the Gideon's name was Sam Green. This was an old one. This was in 1948 when this happened. Sam talked to Leo, and uh, Leo really wasn't interested in what he had to say, but Sam was persistent, and he talked to him. And through this talk, uh, Leo gave his life to Christ. Well, God had a special work for Leo. The work he had for him was pioneering churches. He started eight churches over his lifetime. He had eight men surrender to preach under his, under his preaching and started eight churches. Can you imagine how many people got saved from that one, one visit? Out of, out of one visit? But anyway, both of his sons now are pastors and his whole family, he said, is serving in their local churches and, and uh, serving Christ. This one's a little closer to home. A notorious bank robber and safe cracker. 
uh, was caught. She was on the FBI's most wanted list. She was caught in Alabama and put in jail. Her name was Mary Kay Beard. While she was in jail, she picked up a Gideon Bible and started reading it. She said she come across the verse in Ezekiel 36, 26 that touched her heart. It said, a new heart will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Well, that day, Mary Kay Beard surrendered her life to the Lord, and she thanks him today for allowing her to start the Angel Tree Ministry. Y'all ever heard of that? That's, that's just some examples of things that the thousands of uh, testimonies we get from people that have uh, accepted Christ from a Gideon jail visit or, or a... Uh, school, giving them out to school or, or wherever. Uh, we have uh, thousands and thousands of people that send in, send in these. Uh, like I said, we give out somewhere around 83 million Bibles a year. That, that's a lot of Bibles, ain't it? And you would think giving out that many Bibles that we would finally catch up, but we have thousands and thousands of requests for Bibles every year that we can't meet because we don't have the funds to do it. So uh, we also, uh, the Gideons have just started a new program that you might be interested in at some point. Uh, it's called Conversations. That's where a bunch of Gideons will go and they will come into your church and they've been through training, but it teaches you how to be an effective witness. It's, it's about an eight hour course and I'm not sure exactly how they, they might do it four hours at a time, you know, maybe at night or something like that. But they come in and, and teach you how to be an effective witness. A lot of people really don't know how to be an effective witness. You know, and it's not as easy, it's easy to think about, I can tell anybody about Christ, but most of us have some fears about doing that. Well, it kind of helps you get over those fears, uh, those hesitations about talking about it and tells you ways to, to approach people where you can do it without, you know, sometimes it's the hardest part is doing an initial approach to somebody. Uh, but uh, it, it does that. On Wednesday night at our church, we have been studying Romans. Wednesday night, we studied the first three verses of Romans 12. And I wanted to read that to you today because it touched my heart. My pastor said it touched his heart when he read them, and he's read them many times before. But he said if he had to pick out three verses out of the Bible, the, the Bible in a nutshell, this would be three of them you could use. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but think soberly according as God hath dealt each man a measure of faith. Now, the question I ask is, are we giving our life as a living sacrifice? Are we giving anything up to serve Christ? Are we just coming to church on Sunday and maybe Wednesday and listening to the preacher preach and going on about our daily work? Are we letting the world conform us? Or are we letting God transform us? We don't have to do anything to be conformed, do we? We just go along. I looked the definition up of conform. It says be similar or be in line with. We don't want to be in line with the world, do we? We want to be in line with God. Can we be in line with both of them? Can't do it, can we? You either you either in line with God or you're in line with the world. Transform, the definition was changed or altered in form, appearance, or nature. So my question is, have we been transformed? 
are we, some churches are just conformed. You know, they're still worldly. They hadn't truly been transformed by God. So that's what we've got to work at. Not letting the world conform us, but letting God transform us. And that's the work that has to come from the inside out. We, he's going to do that from the inside out. So uh, that's just my word for you today. I encourage you, uh, if, if you uh, will partner with the Gideons, I promise you every dollar you donate will go to purchase Bibles. Like I said, we, we as Gideons, are, every one of us are a member of a local church somewhere. So we're an extension of a local church. You may not be able to go out and go to a different country or a third world country and give out Bibles. But if you support a ministry, every soul that's saved, every Bible that's given out through that ministry, you become a part of. You're laying up crowns in heaven when you do that. You don't have to go into the third world country and give out Bibles. You can be a part of it though.